Hey everyone, it's me again. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the notes that you're going to be taking today. Uh, just some brief ones on the origin of the oceans. Um, so hopefully at this point you have your notes open and you're ready to start <clears throat> copying this down. Feel free to take and pause uh, this video as often as you need to to copy the slides. <coughs> okay, so the first thing to talk about before we talk get into our main topic, which is where the water in the oceans came from, let's talk a little bit about the percentages. So um, when you're thinking about the water on Earth as a whole, 97% of it is salt. 3% of it is fresh. And less than 1% of that is accessible to us. Most of that fresh water is locked away in the groundwater or in ice caps where it is unreachable to us. So of the almost 7 billion people on Earth, we have <clears throat> less than 1% percent of the water on the planet that we can use for our everyday uh, drinking, washing, um, and everyday use to keep life going the way we like it. Okay, now, um, as far as the oceans go, <clears throat> the percentage of the planet that the oceans cover is 71. Um, and that's why, again, we call it the blue planet because we have so much water, so much oceans that cover the surface. Now, just an interesting fact, this is not something that you necessarily have to add to your notes, but just to give you <clears throat> a little bit of perspective. So even though the oceans to you and I seem huge, they're actually quite small compared to the planet as a whole. <clears throat> now, one of the comparisons that I like to think about when I'm thinking about the size of the ocean I think about the size of your average classroom globe, okay? And the deepest parts of the ocean would be as thin as about two or three sheets of paper. The oceans are so thin compared to the size of the planet as a whole that if you were to touch that globe, okay, it wouldn't even, the oceans would not feel wet because they are so incredibly thin. So just to kind of put things in perspective. Now, one of the things that I always like to talk about at the beginning of oceans um, and oceanography is where did they come from? We're going to be studying a lot about uh, what's called physical oceanography. So we will discuss like some of the animals and stuff of the sea, but most of that's for bio. We're going to be talking a lot about the water itself and a lot of the ocean features. <clears throat> so I always like to talk a little bit about where um, scientists believe that the oceans came from. Now, there's a lot of different theories out there, okay, on the ocean formation. Um, but as of right now, there are two that are sort of leading the race. Now, um, neither one of these, I would say at this point, has better evidence than the other. They're both, I would say, equal in their plausibility. Um, as far as the evidence goes. So because of that, there is still a lot of debate going on <clears throat> between scientists about which theory, if either theory, is correct. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through <clears throat> the basics of the theories. So the first hypothesis is called the remote source theory. Okay, and we call it the remote source theory because it comes from a place that is not found on earth. So what we have discovered um, as we have started to study comets and meteors that have entered our atmosphere and hit the earth's surface, we found that <clears throat> they carry water with them, especially comets. Um, you can see that the, they contain about 0.5% water, which doesn't sound like a lot. Um, but essentially, the idea is that in the early uh, solar system, when the oceans were first forming about 4 billion years ago, we were getting hit by comets and meteors and asteroids way more than we are today. Much, 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 much more. Um, so because of the fact that we got hit by so many more of them, than we do today, that's what helps to make this 
plausible. All right, now the second theory <clears throat> is called the local source. And the local source, you can see from the picture, has to do with volcanoes. Um, we know from <coughs> studying eruptions today that a large component of the material that gets released during an eruption, whether it's violent like the one in the picture there, or more gentle like something in Hawaii, a lot of water vapor is released into the atmosphere okay and then that water vapor would collect in earth's atmosphere over time and then would rain and collect in the ocean basins and that would be kind of similar to what's happening with the comets as well the water doesn't just end up in the ocean basins it would enter the atmosphere and then eventually it would rain and then we would get the water into the oceans okay so um this is just a method essentially both of these for getting water vapor into the atmosphere so then it could eventually rain and fill the oceans and the other thing to remember about both of these is the ocean did not form quickly okay it wasn't like you know overnight or over the course of a week or a month or a year that the oceans just came to be we're talking like hundreds of thousands of years it took for the water to build up enough to resemble something somewhat close to what we see today and the size of the oceans have changed sometimes they're higher there was a point in history when it covered 90 percent of the planet sometimes it's lower like during the ice ages so the water level um, changes depending upon the conditions present on the planet okay so again Remote source that the water vapor comes from comets and asteroids and meteors, and local source is that it comes from volcanic eruptions. Now, I gave you guys the very brief overview of these two leading theories. And like I said before, we don't know which one is correct. Um, and the reason why is because this happened so long ago, four billion years ago, we don't have rocks from that period of time. No one was around to witness it. Um, we just don't have enough evidence to prove either way which one, if any of them, are correct. So this is kind of our best hypothesis, I'll say, um, as far as what the scientific community has come up with so far. So what you're going to be doing today is you are going to tell me what your thoughts are on the subject. Okay, um, so I've given you a very brief overview of these two topics or these two theories. You are going to explore them a little bit further. <clears throat> so in Canvas, um, once you've taken care of all these notes here, you're going to open up the assignment that says Origins of the Ocean, and you're going to be doing a little research, okay, um, into kind of looking at these theories more in depth. So you're going to be filling out this little... <clears throat> organizer okay and you're going to research more about these two theories okay whether you have sort of an idea which one you like better than the other you're going to put that aside for now <coughs> and you're going to gather some extra information so based on the notes you're going to add a few things to both theories and both pieces of evidence in red then um, you'll use the textbook page chapters that are posted in Canvas, um, and anything you learn from them, you're going to post it in blue in the chart. And then anything you get from the websites here, there's videos, there's articles, there's all kinds of stuff here, you're going to add them in in green. Um, and by the time you're done, you should have a, a nice detailed explanation of each theory and lots and lots of evidence for both theories. Once you've kind of thoroughly learned a lot of especially the evidence for the theories then you're going to decide what you think um is the one that seems the most plausible to you so you could either side with the remote source theory the volcanism theory or um, there are a group of scientists who think it's a combination of both and you could say that as well and then based on all of this research you've done when we filled these out before in the past, so you probably um, know a little bit about this, this should look familiar, you're going to write me a quick little essay telling me what you think or which theory you think <clears throat> is the most plausible, and then you're going to tell me <clears throat> why you think it's the most plausible. You're going to be providing me with evidence that sways 
your opinion. And you need to have, if you look in the organizer, at least three pieces of evidence, okay? I would say this essay should be maybe about a paragraph in length, maybe two, okay? But don't go overboard. I'm not looking for something huge, okay? So just a paragraph or two telling me your opinion and some evidence to back it up. Hey, when you're all finished, if you still have time left over in class, you can go into Canvas and open up the <clears throat> midterm exam study guide and start taking a look at that um, because midterms are going to be here before we know it. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the exam when I'm back at school tomorrow. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great day. If, if you have any questions about the assignments, please send me an email and I will get back to you as soon as you can. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.